After much fanfare and fanfare, a grand feast was held for the guests. Valavarayan did not like the feast. His body was tired, the heart was disturbed. However, his friend Kanamaran, who was by his side, proudly mentioned who the other guests were. Apart from Palyavatarayar and Sambhavarayar, Mazapati Tenavan Mazavarayar had come there, Kundraturb Purunalakijar had come, Mumyadi Palavarayar had come. Kanthamaran told his friend's ear that they were the ones who were Kalangaryar of Tant Hong, Vanangamudi Favarayar, Devasnadhapati Favarayar, Anjata Singamutharayar, Twink Uday Rajaliar, Purunila Velar of Kolimela and others. These figures are not ordinary, they are not easy to put together. Probably each were petty kings, or those who have earned the respect of the Kurunila king by their heroic deeds. Raja or king means a rayar in Maravi period. The minor princes and those equally distinguished as minor princes were given the title Arayar. There was also a tradition of saying only their own town and adding it as Aryar. In those days, princes were not those who were born with the title of king and lived in palace comforts. The valiant soldiers who stand at the forefront of the battlefield and are willing to fight can sustain their statehood for a long time. So everyone will have fought on many battlefields with fame and wounds. Today, all of them were ruling within the boundaries of the old Sundarachola Emperor's rule. Some also served as high-ranking government officials in the Chola Empire. Valavaria must have been justified in seeing all such important figures of the Chola Empire in one place. However, he was not satisfied. Why are so many people gathered here? The thought often occurred to him. Some restless doubts appeared in his mind. With such confusion in his mind, Valavarayan went to sleep in a separate place that Kandamara had prepared for him. As there were many guests, Valavarayan got to sleep in an open hall in the upper floor of the Amapuram mansion. You are very tired, so lie down peacefully and sleep. After taking care of the other guests, I will come and lie down next to you, said Kanamaran and left. As soon as he lay down, Vandiyadeva's eyes rolled. Very soon Goddess Nidira possessed him. But what's the point? Mind is one thing, which even Goddess Nidra cannot control. Even though the body is still and the eyes are closed, the thoughts that are buried deep in the mind evolve into dreams. Many events and experiences that are meaningless, irrelevant to knowledge, and experience occur in that dream world. A fox howling was heard from somewhere far away. A fox, ten foxes, a hundred foxes, howled in unison. They came closer and closer to Vandiyathevan while howling. In the darkness, the fox's eyes flashed like tiny sparks of fire and approached him. Vandiyathevan saw that he could run to the other side and escape. In the other direction he saw, ten, a hundred, a thousand dogs came running and barking in one herd. The eyes of those hounds flashed like heat traps. Vandiyadeva trembled thinking what would be his fate if he was caught between foxes and hounds. Fortunately, a temple was visible opposite. He rushed into the open temple and slammed the door. Looking back, it turned out to be Kali Temple. A priest emerged from behind the statue of Kalimata, who was gaping open. In his hand was a terrible scythe. Come. Come. Saying that, the priest came closer, closer, closer. What is the history of the royal clan in which you were born? How many years has your clan ruled? Tell me the truth, asked the priest. Vandiyathevan said, Vanarkulata Valavarya ruled the kingdom for three hundred years, during my father's time we lost the kingdom to the Vathumbareyas. Then you are not a suitable victim. Run away. Said the priest. Suddenly Kanaparumal appeared in Kalamata's place. At Kanan Sunadi, two women with garlands in their hands sang Andal Pasuram and danced. As Valavarayan was ecstatic at this, he heard the song behind him, Kandam, 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 Kanyakanilyana Kandam and looked back. The singer is believed to be Alvarkadian. No. Alvarkadian's head sang. Only the head was placed on the altar. Unable to bear seeing this scene, Valavarayan turned back, he hit the pillar. The dream dissipated, 
eyes opened. But he happened to see a scene that combined dream and consciousness. Opposite to where he lay, a head was seen above the wall of the Kadampur mansion. That is the head of that Alwarkadian Nambai. This time it was definitely not a dream, not just an illusion. Because no matter how long I looked, the head was still there. It was easy to infer that it was not just a head but a body behind the head. Because all Alwarkadian's hands were holding the edge of the wall. And he was carefully peering into the interior under the wall. What is he looking at so carefully there? There must be some cunning in this. All Alwarkadian could not have come there with good intentions. He has come to do evil with some evil intention. Isn't it his duty as Kanamaran's life friend to prevent him from doing such evil deeds? Is he lying idly by without preventing the harm that may befall the homes of those who have given him a swan with love? Valavarayan jumped up. He took the sheathed knife from his side and inserted it into his waist. He walked towards the spot where Alwarkadian's head was found. Wasn't Valavarayan lying in a corner hall on the top floor of the mansion? When leaving there and walking towards the wall, one had to walk past, over and around the Mandapa Sikaras, platforms, Vimana stupas and pillars that decorated the top floor. After walking like this for a short distance, suddenly hearing a voice coming from somewhere, Valavarayan hesitated. Holding on to a pillar there, he peered into the corner of the pillar. Below, in a narrow courtyard surrounded by long walls on three sides, ten or twelve people were sitting. Long walls hid half the afternoon light. But a lamp burning in an iron lamp fixed on a wall gave some light. All those present were persons he had seen at the party that night, minor kings were also officials of the Chola Empire. They must have gathered there at midnight to discuss some very important matter. What they are doing and what they are saying is what Alwarkadian observes so keenly from the wall. There is no doubt that Alwarkadian is a very wicked villain. From where he was he could see the congregants below, you can hear them very well. But the people below cannot see the Alwarkadian. The palace walls and walls were situated in that place. Alwarkadian has somehow found such a place. He's a bad guy, no doubt. But all his wickedness won't work with this Vanadiya Deva. The Vshatari came and held the Vaishnava by the hand, but if he could hold him like that, he would not be able to approach the inner wall without attracting the attention of those gathered below. There may be some danger in walking so that they may see. He shouldn't have come here today. He remembered what Sambuvaryar had said. All of them have come here to discuss something important. It's a relief that they don't want others to know about their ideas. If they suddenly see him while he is like that, can't you be suspicious of yourself? Before he can tell them about Alwarkadian, he jumps out of the wall and runs away. So the only thing left is to doubt him. What did you come here for lying down? What is the answer? It can only embarrass Kanamaran's situation. Aha! Adu Gandamaran is sitting on one side of this crowd. It seems that he is also participating in the deliberations of this group. If you listen to Kanamaran in the morning, you will know everything. It seems that he is also participating in the deliberations of this group. If you listen to Kanamaran in the morning, you will know everything. It seems that he is also participating in the deliberations of this group. If you listen to Kanamaran in the morning, you will know everything. At that time, Mudupalaku, which was placed next to Aku Tatar, attracted the attention of Vandiyadeva. Cow! Wasn't this Palaku the Palaku that followed his elephant with the reaper? The woman inside, the woman who removed the curtain for a moment and looked out, is she now in which part of the mansion? Didn't this old man send her even to that place? He was embarrassed when a little older people married young women. Doubt buys their soul. They do not want to be separated from their young wife even for a moment. Maybe, even now, there is a young wife of the cultivator in this palanquin, or what? Aha! See the fate of this hero. At this age, he falls in love with a young woman and becomes a slave to her. She does not have a chariot, a mane, or a saw. He never forgot the awkward feeling that Vandiyathevan had felt when he looked at her for a moment. This heroic revenger does not know what passion she has for such a woman. 
even more amazing is the sheer madness. It seems that he is also waiting on the wall because this palanquin is placed here. But what do we know about the relationship between him and her? She might be his sister or girlfriend. The predator might have taken her away by force. He is the only one who can do that. So all Alwarkadian is looking for an opportunity to talk to her and it seems that he wanders like this. What do we get about this? You can lie down and sleep without talking. Even more amazing is the sheer madness. It seems that he is also waiting on the wall because this palanquin is placed here. But what do we know about the relationship between him and her? She might be his sister or girlfriend. The predator might have taken her away by force. He is the only one who can do that. So all Alwarkadian is looking for an opportunity to talk to her and it seems that he wanders like this. What do we get about this? You can lie down and sleep without talking. Even more amazing is the sheer madness. It seems that he is also waiting on the wall because this palanquin is placed here. But what do we know about the relationship between him and her? She might be his sister or girlfriend. The predator might have taken her away by force. He is the only one who can do that. So Alwarkadian is looking for an opportunity to talk to her and it seems that he wanders like this. What do we get about this? You can lie down and sleep without talking. As the young man made up his mind, he heard his name mentioned in the conversation below. He immediately began to pay close attention. Has a child come who is your son's friend? Where does he lie? Let none of our words fall into his ears. Remember that he is a servant of the Lord of the North. Let no one else know of this until the time comes for our plan to be confirmed and accomplished. That child must have nothing. He should not be sent out of this fort even if he is suspected of having some information. It would be better to dispose of him at once. One can only guess how Van Diathevan felt when he heard this. But he did not move from that place. He made sure to listen to their entire conversation. Who is Vadase Mathandanayak? The eldest son of Emperor Sundara Shola. The next to ascend the Chola throne is the Crown Prince. What is their objection to working with him? What are they going to talk about that he should not know? At that time Kanamaran's intercession for his friend fell on Valavarayan's ears. Vandiyadeva is sleeping peacefully in the upper corner hall. The talk of this meeting will not fall on his ears. He is not one to interfere in matters that do not concern him. Even if he knows something, it will not harm your idea, I am responsible for that. Said Kanamaran. I am glad that you have so much faith in him. But none of us knew him before, that is why I warned you. We are about to speak of the right of a great empire. A word should get out through carelessness, and terrible mishaps may result. You must all remember this. Said the Reaper.